right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Jason Patria, who is just up the road in Los Angeles. How are you doing, Jason? Hey, what's going on, John? <clears throat> Absolutely fantastic. I'm delighted to talk to Jason today. He's a noted speaker, facilitator, 25-year learning and development veteran of Fortune 100 companies. You've done TEDx talks uh, and various other, uh, other ones as well. And what we want to talk about today is how to lead with your brand. Okay, so let's dive straight into it, uh, into it uh, Jason. Let's, let's define brand for a moment, because I always think, you know, you can have these conversations about brand, and I sometimes feel that different people have different perceptions of what brand means. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to me, quite, quite simply, you know, the brand is the sum of all of the experiences, all of the information, and all of the expectations that people have of a product or service offering but really for us as leaders it's the sum of all of those things for you and most importantly going out to your target audience mm -hmm. and at the end of the day who really defines your brand i mean you define your brand to some degree but it's really the perception of your audience at the end of the day isn't it well, it's their perception, but ultimately you're in charge, right? So people mm -hmm. talk to me all of the time and they say, oh, help me with my brand because I don't have a brand. But the reality <laughs> is, is everybody has a brand. The real question is, are you consciously, competently, and strategically making choices so that you're leading with your brand in a way that you're driving the perception that you want? Mm -hmm. So what are some ways that the people uh, don't do that consciously and what's the ramifications of that? Because, I mean, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, companies or people, you know, small, maybe they think, okay, my brand is my logo and then my name and my logo and what I do, there's my brand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, here, the biggest pitfall for me is letting your job title define your brand, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are just defined by the company that you work for and the job title that you have, then you are just a commodity worker, right? Because if I'm a financial analyst, if I'm an HR professional, mm -hmm. if I am an operational manager or a project manager, if my whole brand is about that title and then the organization that I work for, guess what? Like every organization in America has like hundreds of people that do your same job, right? If we just, right. let's just look out across Fortune 1000 companies, like there are probably 100,000 people that do human resources work or finance right. work, right? Yeah. So if you are just, if that is your brand, then that's a problem because here's what we know, especially a crazy year like this, like you might find out that your company no longer exists. You might find yeah. out that your company can't afford to keep you on pay Payroll, and then suddenly you don't have a brand because it was all about the company that you worked mm -hmm. for and the title of the job that you did, not the value that you actually brought to those things. Yeah, and, and I think that's such a great point, uh, Jason, and especially as you say right now, because you know, there's a lot of people probably have lost jobs or are you know, things aren't that secure and going forward and it's going to be really competitive. So what do you say to somebody who's like an individual who says, take that HR person or whatever, because, okay, Jason, I, can't, I don't have a brand. What, how can I build a brand? I'm just an HR person. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, here, here's kind of the easy thing. And, and some of this is that I find is so many of us are so humble. It's hard mm -hmm. to put the mirror up to ourselves and actually say like authentically, what do I rock at? Like, what do I bring to the table, right? But that, and that's the tough work of doing this because for many people, if you look at, at the things that we would do to assess your brand and even define your brand, it would be really easy for you to do it on somebody else. But for some reason, turning those tools towards ourselves is difficult. But uh, John, I always ask these questions. I, I'm gonna ask you this question. Sure. If you were a type of car, what type of car would you be? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I, I think I would, I think I would be a high, one of the, the, the high end extended Range Rover. <laughs> yeah. And, and why? Like, like, how are you like one of those extended high end Range Rovers? Well, because I think uh, it's a company because when I look at like the high end extended Range Rover, it's a combination of sophistication, 
practicality because you know that thing can go wherever and and strength and it's got strength and uh, it's a significant it stands out yeah, it stands out. So like you, you have already defined some things that I would probably say, John, are like, you're sophisticated, you are practical, right? Like, so all of those adjectives that you used that de described how you might be like that type of car, then suddenly are ways that you can quickly say, hey, in an authentic way, right? These might be hallmarks of my own brand, right? And right. so that's kind of one of those easy things to say is if you're a financial analyst or a project manager or an HR professional, you can say, okay, if I was a type of car, right? Or if I was a retail store online right. or at the mall, like which one would I be and why? Like, wh like what brand of finance am I, right? Those <laughs> help you kind of come up with some of those authentic brand attributes because we know that brands are about great words, right? That's, yeah. that's what defines like, I can look at a car and a car is a car, but that's why all of those brands, we say different, different things, right? Like I say, I'm a Jeep Wrangler, Right. But my version of Jeep Wrangler is like fun and showy mm -hmm. and sassy, mm -hmm. but still rough, right? It's kind of like yeah. <laughs> Cheryl from Clueless driving around Bel Air, you know, not some crazy off-road, like, which might be somebody else's view of right. who they are. But when I say those types of things, right, I know that those are kind of elements of my own brand. So I think that's an easy thing that we can all do. You know, the pitfall, John, to avoid is looking at somebody else's brand and saying, mm -hmm. you want to be that, right? I have yeah. clients that I'm coaching all of the time and they'll come and say like, well, I want to be like Steve Jobs or I want to be like <laughs> Sheryl Sandberg. Or interestingly enough, the one that yeah. everybody said or the most people say is they want to be like Oprah, which is great. Really? I mean, don't we all want to be like Oprah? Sure. <laughs> but here's the deal. It's like, you ain't Oprah and you're never yeah, going to yeah. be her. Like that's yeah. the reality. So we can only be us. And that's not a bad thing because we want to be the unique and authentic us that only we can be. But then it's about like, how do we turn the volume up? And I like to use the term supersize. Like we need mm -hmm. to supersize our brand attributes um, so that they read in a way that tell people why they should hire us. And mm -hmm. it's okay. Those brand attributes and our brand should also say like, why you shouldn't hire me. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. You know, no, I, 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 I love those points. I love those points. I just want to come back to a couple of them there. Number one is I love the, the exercise about the car. That's, that's really cool. But again, like you said, uh, that probably is a struggle for a lot of people because again, you just put, you, you putting them on the spot and saying, tell me things about yourself, talk about yourself. And I do think we underestimate our abilities. Sometimes you just have to sit back and look at your career and the things that you've done to realize how unique your experiences are. Absolutely. And I think it's even going back throughout your whole life, yeah. right? You know, if you think about how you've been, at least as a young adult, right? If I think back to elements of things that I did in high school, <laughs> I can say there's relevance to as someone who's almost 50 years old, right? Like I can see mm -hmm. things going back, you know, 35, 40 mm -hmm. years that that those brand elements were there. Now, maybe they were applied to things like <laughs> running a club or being <laughs> in the high school musical right? Or what extracurriculars I chose or what I might do for a school project. But I can actually look back and go, oh, some, many of those hallmarks were then, or many of the things that influenced me happened young in life that mm. have influenced what my brand is today and what my point of view is. Yeah. And if I could remember my young adult years, it'd be great. I'm sure there's some great <laughs> stuff in there. <laughs> no. Too much partying, um, but, John? Yeah, uh, just a little. Well, being Irish, come on. It's uh, <laughs> par for the course. Um, but yeah, but I, I like that. That was the one thing about the humility. But the other thing is the kind of the, the, the paradox there, right? The humility, but then wanted to be like Oprah at the same time, right? So there's a, there's a, there's a balance in there. But it is funny. It's because, uh, as you say, it's easy for us to write about other things or write about a brand in the abstract. But for yourself, uh, it gets more difficult. But at the end of the day, um, as you said, if I'm going to hire somebody, I want to be excited about them. And I want to be excited about what are they, what are they uniquely bring? What stands out? I mean, let's go back to our poor HR person, not, not uh, bagging on HR at all, do a fantastic job. But if I was hiring an HR person, I mean, I go through the things that, yeah, here are the things that I want them to be able to do, but I want something to stand out about, about at least one or two of them to go, okay, that's interesting. 
Absolutely, right? So it's all about even when you're looking for a job. And I think these are some of those great interview interview tips for people mm -hmm. to show up and interview with your brand is there's the what we do and then there's the how we do it. Mm -hmm. Right, so you got an interview because you could do the what on the job description, right? Like you probably aren't sitting down with a hiring manager if you haven't already demonstrated through your resume yeah. that you can like negotiate a contract or you can do, you know, whatever these things that they're asking for, right? Like we know that if you have five years of experience or 10 years of experience or you have a certification, like we know that you can do that skill. The differentiator is like, how you did that, right? So as a hiring manager, I'm looking for, yes, can everyone do the job? But I'm looking for someone that can do it in a way that either matches my organization or is filling a gap that we don't have there. And so that's, that's where your brand can come in and be the differentiator. Yeah, and, and I think that's such an incredibly important point. And again, for people listening or watching, uh, if you are going to be looking for a job or it is competitive out there, you ought to think about, start thinking about it from that point of view, saying, yes, I have the skill set, I have the qualifications, but what's, what's, the, what's the it factor? Absolutely. I love that. It's like, what's the it factor, right? I kind of call it like, what are those signature elements? And even when you're interviewing, I like to ask this question, you know, not, not what are your standout highlights of things that you've done in your career, but what are your signature projects? If you can think mm -hmm. back over the past two or three years, what are two or three projects that you would say, these are signature John projects. These are yeah. signature Jason projects projects, right? One, those are the, those are the projects that you want to talk all about, right? When someone mm -hmm. asks you, tell me about a time. Yeah. You want to tell it about a time that's in context to one of your signature projects, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's the whole magic of really saying, what's the secret sauce across all of these projects? You know, what is it that I brought to it that, yes, anybody who has my skills could do that project, but what were the thumbprints and fingerprints mm -hmm. that, like, I left all over it? If you can figure out what that secret sauce is, then you can replicate that. And I kind of call it, it's like your brand filter. You can replicate that on any project. You can bring that it factor to any project that you are um, working on, even if it's a project that you're not super excited about, right? Because it's right. easy for us to put our imprint on something that we're passionate about, but we mm -hmm. all have in our job where we get assigned <laughs> something that's like, yeah, I mean, if, if I owned the company, that's not the project that I would assign to myself. <laughs> But that is not an excuse to not do it within your yeah. brand, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I used to always tell people uh, whenever they're, you know, they'd be hiring and they'd be going to their job description, I'd always say, actually, there's only one line that counts on the job description, and that's, and anything else your manager may ask you to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, can you do anything else your manager asks you to do, but within your brand, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I love that. So how do you, how would you suggest people go and sort of look at themselves and find what that secret sauce is? What should they be looking for? Because I think sometimes people struggle at assessing the, their own value. It's like that whole idea of being unconsciously competent, right? You're, you're really good at it, but you can't tell any, you, you can't sit down and tell, explain to somebody why you're good at it. Absolutely. Here's the first thing is you can't do it in a vacuum, right? Like mm -hmm. we're having this great, engaging, fun <laughs> conversation, right? And you cannot do this brand work without having a conversation. So the first thing I would say is go out to people who you love, right? Like who are your raving fans? <laughs> who are the people that you work with really well and have a conversation just like we're having because when you are triangulating it, when you're talking about it, you suddenly actually say all of the words, right? This is not mm. about like, let me pull out and go to like thesaurus.com <laughs> and like come up with all of these different words. It's more, what are the natural words we're using? Like you said things like sophisticated and practical and like gets the job done and is reliable, right? Like those were your words, not, we didn't go and like look at the thesaurus. To, yeah, I've, I to forgot to mention that it looked, I forgot to mention, looks really cool too. <laughs> we, okay, obviously, <laughs> very, very cool looking, right? Um, so that's one thing. And I'm a huge fan of going and asking for feedback, yeah. right? When I work with any of my clients one-on-one, um, -on -one, we are 
going out and sending a survey. And I say like, this isn't like a 360 survey. You, you don't have to like, I'm gonna do my boss and four peers. Like that's not what I'm talking about. But are you going out to who your raving fans are? Who are the people that you say are your best buyers? Who yeah. calls you? Who calls you for advice? Who asks you to be on project teams? Who sends people to you um, for advice, insights, and recommendations? Right? Like, who calls you and says, like, "Oh, I saw a job opening." Right? Like, those are your raving fans. Mm -hmm. So whether you do something that's like a formal survey, or you like pick up the phone and say, "You know, do you have fifteen minutes? I just want to ask you a couple of questions." That's that's sort of the magic is you have to get that feedback because as we started out the conversation, John, you know, this is about what other people think, right? Mm -hmm. a br brands that work are brands that listen to their raving fans and their best mm -hmm. their best customers. Yeah, no, I love that advice, Jason, because it's great because you think about every practically everybody in your job, there are times there are people who come to you either for advice or they ask you to help with something or whatever. And, uh, and there's a reason why they do that. There's a reason why they come to you and you probably don't realize it until, as you say, you go through that exercise of actually asking people. And I think the, and I think the great thing is if people are very generous with their feedback like that, especially when it's in a positive um, scenario like that. I think people want you to know what's good about you. Absolutely. And here's like, here's some easy questions to ask is, you know, what are three words that you would use to describe me when mm -hmm. I'm at my best? Just three, right. three descriptors, right? And like, you can do that in email, like it doesn't even yeah. have to be over the phone, right? And then I always say, give me one or two words that describe me when I'm stressed out or I'm not doing my best, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's all about giving you a whole set of like, on one end, what are the tailwinds, right? Like, what are the tailwinds that help you go faster, quicker, more efficiently? But we all have like one or two headwinds that are creating <laughs> that brand drag, right? And, mm -hmm. and people who are your raving fans, even people who love you will say like, oh, when you're stressed out, you get a little persnickety or you become like a professional, <laughs> right? They'll be honest with you. And that's the great thing about asking raving fans. And then if you even wanted to ask another question, a great one is, um, if you had to finish the sentence, turn to John for dot, 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 what would it be? Because you want to actually ask them in their own words, like, why do they ask me for advice? Like, why do mm -hmm. they recommend people come to me um, for a job? Why did they recommend people be on my team, right? Whatever it is, you can actually hear in their words, because I think when you look at your position and why, why someone should hire you, right? Or why yeah. someone should promote you, it's those things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I love that. And I also just, I think this is a great piece of advice as well for people, because let's face it, what happens with normally when you are looking for or interviewing for a job, it's at the very end of the process when they ask you for references and obviously you give them people, you give them raving fans, right? But you have to get to that point in order for them to hear from your raving fans. So earlier, so you may not even get to that point. So er, you need to have that feedback in the process already from the get go as part of your brand, not hoping you get through the process so they can hear about it at the very end. Absolutely. And I think this is the great thing about, you know, how we work now is we've mm -hmm. got great tools like LinkedIn and other social media yeah. platforms, right? One of the things I love about LinkedIn is, you know, before you're looking for the job, right? Or if you're a business owner and mm -hmm. running a company, like before you're looking for new clients and customers, like get your raving fans to leave you reviews and recommendations in their own mm -hmm. words. Because to your whole point, we might not ask for the references till the very end, but those reviews up front are already sitting there, right? And that's yeah. something that we never had before mm -hmm. the digital world, right? So yeah. use it to your advantage. Don't look at it as something that's like, ugh, now I have to ask someone for a review, right? Which I believe me, I get. Like, I don't always yeah, wanna, sure. you know, ping someone and say like, oh, can you write me a recommendation? Or, mm -hmm. you know, can you put something on my LinkedIn? But think of the power of yeah. your raving fans as being influencers yeah no i i agree and to be honest i think mostly when you ask people i mean they get it they know why you're doing it and in some ways they respect it i think because you're taking care of yourself because just uh, underpinning this whole thing jason it's just that idea is that if you are not your biggest cheerleader if you are not working hardest on your behalf who else is going to 
Exactly. Right. I mean, and that's all about you have to be your own chief marketing officer. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and the first part of marketing is advertising, which is 100% what you control. Right. If you, if we're looking mm -hmm. at a big company, like somebody else isn't doing the advertising, like that's the message you own. Yeah. So if yeah. you're not going to own your message, why should other people spend the time to recommend and be a great influencer, right? Like why should other people have great word of mouth about you when you don't even have like the basics of your 30 second spot or your billboard yeah. ready to go? Yeah, because if you don't, what you're kind of like saying, I don't really want to be known. I don't really, I mean, you're almost giving a, a subliminal message to other people to sort of, I'm happy here, just leave me in my, and that's maybe completely the opposite of how you really feel. Absolutely. And here's what great marketers know. At minimum, at minimum, we need to see an advertisement seven times before mm -hmm. we're even aware, before right. we're even aware, right? And, and many times we're even seeing studies where it's like up to 15 or 20 times, right? And keep in mind that is an intent to purchase. So mm -hmm. one thing that I hear people say all the time is like, well, I did that. And I was like, okay, but you did that once. Once <laughs> in the year, like doesn't cut it. It's like, I think about when we're driving mm -hmm. in our car, it's like, how many times am I going to drive past that Netflix billboard? That's like, you know, the next season of Stranger Things is, is coming, right? right? That's why we, mm -hmm. that's why companies still buy those outdoor billboards. Cause I might have to drive past that like 10 times before it even mm -hmm. registers to me that it's there. And then that doesn't even mean I'm going to have an intent to actually click through on a Friday night and watch it, right? So at minimum, you need to have that core message that's out there and it needs to be consistent over time, right? And that's where mm -hmm. your digital tools like your social media, LinkedIn, and you know, my other thing on social media is like so many people are like, I'm, an, I'm on social media, but I'm just a looky-loo. I just yeah, look yeah, at yeah. other people's stuff. Well, that's kind of like just sitting on the sideline. It's like, where, where's your billboard, right? Like, where's your content? And it doesn't mean that, like, you don't need to be like us where we create videos and podcasts mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. all of these things. But yeah. if you don't ever comment on people's things, if you don't ever share um, articles that are about your expertise or people that you find to be interesting, then it's almost like you're you're again, it's like you're invisible and you're waiting for somebody else to define who you are. Yeah, yeah, it's like that thing. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's literally in many ways, it's like sitting at home on your couch waiting for somebody to knock on your door and say, oh, I have the job for you. Um, I've never seen that happen, but uh, maybe it has. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, Jason, this is fantastic. Um, all of Jason's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Absolutely. Well, again, my name's Jason Patria. I'm a personal branding expert, a diversity advocate, and a keynote speaker. And you can learn more about me at leadwithyourbrand.com or on my podcast, Lead With Your Brand, that is all about listening to amazing leaders and how they lead with their brand to their career breakthrough. Fantastic. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all again for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.